19 candidates, huh? Already? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that pales in comparison to the almost 100 candidates, I believe, that Media Matters tracked uh, in 2020, uh, in 2020. But um, yeah. yeah, Q hasn't posted in six months. So what even is the association or Q? Yeah. Well, it's actually just to get, to get we get the latest update. When, when I published that piece, it was 19. That was only a couple of days ago. Now it's up to 24 already. Oh. Um, Media Matters are kind of really keeping on top of this. Alex Kaplan is doing an unbelievable job. They're kind of just tracking all these people across the country. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, as you said, there was 97 candidates in 2020 by the end. Um, it looks like we're, we're actually ahead of the figure we were at this time, 18 months out in 2019. So we're already kind of ahead of the game in terms of the number of QAnon candidates that are, are there. And I think what's surprising to people is the fact that, as you said, Q hasn't posted in six months. It was six months this week since his last post or their last post. Um, Donald Trump isn't back in the White House. Joe Biden is there. As you said, none of the predictions have come true. And yet the movement um, is thriving. It's um, They've just had a massive conference, the biggest QAnon conference, yes, in Dallas uh, two weeks ago, where they had Michael Flynn, um, Alan West, then the chairman of the GOP party in Texas, who has since resigned, um, Louis Gohmert, sitting congressman, speaking, Sidney Powell, um, and then a, a, a whole host of QAnon influencers. Um, and it just shows that showed that these people are not going away. They still believe fully in the whatever they believe that is going to happen. They still truly believe that Donald Trump is going to come back. They think that the Arizona audit is going to suddenly show something happened and it's going to overturn election results. Um, and it's just clear that there is a huge there's tens of millions of people out there who believe this. And therefore, the people who are running for Congress, who have at one point kind of espoused belief in QAnon, know that, you know, it's possibly good for getting them votes, that they they are part of this movement. Even if they're not kind of fully throated QAnon supporters, they still are kind of hinting and winking at it. And that's enough to get them some votes. Yeah. And, and one of the candidates, the QAnon candidates quoted in your piece, says that there are a lot more believers in QAnon out there in terms of uh, candidates and elected officials then are publicly uh, disclosed. Essentially, someone like Louis Gohmert, he's going to a QAnon conference. I mean, we should classify him as one of these Q Republicans, but he's not publicly saying it, um, which is just, I think, another niche of Republican, right? Um, would you say that the, the that are sympathetic to QAnon or publicly signal to QAnon uh, supporters, but aren't Lauren Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene full-throated uh, Q folk? Well, I, don't, I, would, I would say that Louis Gohmert is possibly even more QAnon than Lauren Boebert, certainly, who's kind of publicly disavowed it, despite kind of embracing it previously. And Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's kind of given a bit of a disavowal yet still plays up very much to that crowd um but yeah you're absolutely right these people like there's there's a huge part of the republican party who just simply say nothing and that in itself is kind of you know it's giving a signal to the people who follow q on to kind of go well yeah these guys they're not disavowing it just like trump didn't when he was repeatedly questioned about it prior to the election he didn't come out and say that this was a baseless conspiracy theory and it's dangerous. Instead, he said these are very nice people. And as a result, we saw a huge amount of QAnon folks at the January 6th riot. Um, so I think that the Republican Party, it's not openly embracing QAnon. It's not coming out and saying this is right. You know, we believe in this. The leadership isn't saying that. But by not coming out strongly against it, it's allowing it to grow and fester within the party. And I absolutely agree that there are a much bigger number of Republican candidates out there who privately maybe would agree with people that, you know, some of these conspiracies are, are true or there's a possibility that they're true. Um, and it's, it's dangerous because it's just, it's growing and growing within the party. 
And as a result, we're seeing this kind of flood or influx of candidates coming for the midterms in 2022. Yeah, and I want to get to them, but I, 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 and we will in a little bit, but I just want to flesh out for the audience, one, what QAnon at least reportedly believes, how it's still thriving, even though a lot of these things didn't pan out, because to me, it's fun to focus on how wrong they have been, but it's it's so much more than just the facts of the conspiracy. It's it's like a sense of belonging. It's a sense of they're not the Democrats are are secretly evil and they're conspiring and it doesn't need to necessarily show itself um, plainly because it's all about, oh, these are shadowy things behind the scenes. You can interpret this sign. And so everything seems like a sign when uh when when anything can be a sign if that makes sense if you could just give the audience a bit of a an insight into that mentality into just the basic tenets of QAnon and how even though you know there was nothing none of the facts on the ground actually played out or or what they thought were facts um it's still thriving sure like it's it's been around now nearly four years it was october 2017 when it started and it, 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 the basic premise of it is that Q is a group of um, top secret government officials who are working with Donald Trump in order to um, take down the deep state and the Democrats um, who they believe are pedophiles running an underground child sex trafficking ring. That's, that's kind of the core belief of QAnon. Um, And that they believe a storm will come, which will be mass arrests, possibly executions. And they have central figures in this conspiracy, um, Biden, Hillary Clinton. And then it goes, you know, people like Tom Hanks as well in Hollywood. It's kind of it embraces kind of quite a broad spectrum of liberal figures. Um, So that's that's kind of the basic time. But what grew out of that and what makes QAnon so unique is the fact that it's a completely online conspiracy theory, something that's began online and has grown online, something we haven't really seen at this scale before. And what dragged people in and got people so committed to this and makes it so difficult to convince people that they're not, that what they believe is wrong, is that you become part of this community where they get you to do your own research um, so that you feel you're part of it. You're not just being told what to do. You're, you're finding the solutions for yourself. You're coming up with your own conclusions. Um, and that feeling of community spoke to so many people, especially on the right, who felt disillusioned with the way the country was going and saw in Donald Trump a figure that they could cling on to, who they believed would bring back America, this vision of America that they have that is you know, once the once glorious America, I guess. Um, And so that brought in kind of racist and anti-Semitic aspects to the conspiracy as well. And it just grew out of that. And like the core conspiracies that Q may have referenced in his, in the drop sort of messages that he posted on 8chan are are kind of the the basic, the kind of uh, text of QAnon. But from that has grown these, like it's grown tentacles in every single direction because various different people have provided proofs for, you know, different conspiracies that have grown out of QAnon. So it's it's kind of become this umbrella term um, for a massive different type of conspiracies. And in the last 12 months, it's also sucked in anti-vaxxer conspiracies, 5G conspiracies, um, and it's just become this kind of melting pot of different beliefs, um, but all driven by the idea that it, we're part, the people who believe it are part of a community who have a secret that the rest of the people don't know, that the rest of the world don't know. And so that gives them this feeling of belonging. Um, and this one, uh, as one professor put it to me he's a, it's it's a feeling of significance that they've been searching for in this in their lives and no matter what they do this is the significance that it gives them hi i'm sam cedar you can watch the rest of this interview and more on our peacock show which streams at 5 p.m weekdays on the choice from peacock tv